Well, it's interesting, you know, often I'm asked, you know, like, and how did you become a Buddhist, you know? <laughs> and I always say, well, I became a Buddhist because I hated my husband. <laughs> So my situation was that in the second marriage, um, I, I, I actually talk about this in When Things Fall Apart. I was innocently drinking a cup of tea in front of our house in New Mexico and on this beautiful day. And, and uh, my husband walked around the corner and told me that he was having an affair with somebody and that he wanted a divorce. <laughs> then it turned out he had been having quite a few affairs with quite a few somebodies. So, um, I was so undone by this. And I think actually I've met a lot of people since that for some reason divorce is always painful and uh, what you feel as betrayal is always very painful. But sometimes more than other times something completely is like an annihilation. Something that happens to you in your life like annihilates you. And I could not get any ground under my feet. And I felt so much anger and so much terror at my anger. And all of this was very unfamiliar to me. And I had managed pretty successfully up to that point in my life, and I think I was uh, 35 or something like that, to um, kind of be easygoing and friendly and out, you know, um, warm-hearted and always looking on the bright side. And wow, that was gone. You know, I just like I kept having all these fantasies about going up, and burning down his house, you know, and um, hurting her child, and you know, breaking all the windows and. Ooh, it was like heavy duty, and I was uh, afraid of my anger, and, but also there it was. So I started looking in a major way. Really, I was looking to try to find some ground. And, um, but there was something um, in me that felt like this was important, that this was such, that there was nothing I could do to entertain myself out of this feeling. It was so totally such a total annihilation, so totally devastating that, you know, going to the movies, smoking a joint, nothing, <laughs> nothing worked, you know. Everything just seemed to heighten the sense of groundlessness and the, the fear. So, um, so I started looking in different therapies, different spiritual disciplines, and I really, I dabbled in lots of stuff there for a while. And then, one day, um, I was given an article and it happened to be by Chogyam Trumpa Rinpoche, who ultimately became my teacher. And this article was called Working with Negativity. It's now actually, uh, in an edited form, a chapter in the book, uh, The Myth of Freedom, by Chogyam Trumpa. It's called Working with Negativity. And in that, he said, there is nothing wrong with negativity per se. He says it's actually a powerful energy. It's actually very juicy and creative and can wake you up. He said the problem is negative negativity, which is like all the spin-off from negativity, blaming the other person or blaming yourself or the endless spin-off. But, the, but he, what he was saying was that the energy itself was, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's uh, helpful. And um, I always say, I don't understand why that made such an impression on me, because I've been trying to understand that article ever since. <laughs> I read it over and over and over, and it's still uh, difficult to understand. But when I read it, it was the first thing that made any sense to me, that, there wa that what I was feeling was actually a key to something rather than an obstacle to something. And so uh, from that, I got involved in Buddhism, initially not with Trungpa Rinpoche, but very soon afterward, a year later, um, a year later, actually, I became a nun, believe it or not. I was a fast mover. <laughs> I did everything like this, you know. And then uh, right after that, I became Trump Rinpoche's student. So why did I become a nun? Good question. At the time, I thought I was a very worldly, older woman of 36, or whatever I was, <laughs> 36 or 7 or something. I had had two marriages. I had had, I felt very uh, fulfilled in terms of my sexual life. I felt like I had done it all. And my passion now was for understanding that article, I think, really. <laughs> I wanted to know how to wake up and how to use the energy of my life to wake up. And that was what, that, I had like such a passion. All my passion went into that. 
So ironically, that's why I became a nun, because of this passion to want to know. And um, I haven't since then, because I live in a monastery, a lot of young people and older people come there to become monks or nuns, either permanently or temporary, for on a temporary basis. And it, believe me, not everybody becomes a monk or nun for that reason. There's a lot of trying to run away from life, uh, trying, you know, your, your sex life hasn't worked out, so you decide to become a monk or a nun. <laughs> and, you know, it's like there's a lot of weird reasons out there for why you try to run away from life and become a monk or nun. And we try to discourage that at the monastery, but in my own case, that was not the motivation. It was definitely because I wanted to dive right in. And I felt like the, you know, the usual ways of diving in I had already related to, and I wanted to go the spiritual path or whatever you want to call it. I wanted to find out the answers. 